worship. Jesus. If you're having a conversation, please stop. Jesus. And call the name of Jesus. Say Jesus. to say. was worth it. Good morning, Abundant Living. How are you today? It's time to give God the more praise. Amen. Join us. Come on down to the altar. Amen. Feel free to dance. We can use this whole sanctuary to give God the praise this morning, y'all.
we call his name. When I call your name, I feel a shift in when I call. When I call your name, I get my breakthrough when I call. When I call your name, say when I call your name. When I call your name, and when I call your name. When I call your name, when I call your name. When I call, when I call your name, I get my healing when I call. When I call your name, say when I call your name. When I call your name, when I call your name. When I call your name, say when I call your name. When I call your name, when I call your name. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We call on your name, Jesus. Yes, we welcome in this We place. call on your name. Jesus. Your name, Lord, is so great. That great name. That great name. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus.
One more time. Come on. You are strong and mighty. Will you lift your hands? y'all know he's great today come on come on come on you just singing it or do you know in your heart God is great today you know I want to I want to encourage you this morning there's a lot going on um, before technology if you worked at a bank they had to worry about counterfeits and so now they got computers and everything and it's hard to run counterfeit bills but back in the day they would train the bank till they would go through weeks and weeks of training and you would think they'd say, okay, you gotta learn how to find this counterfeit. You gotta learn how to find this counterfeit. You gotta learn how to find this counterfeit, but that's not what they did. They were very smart. They would sit down a bank teller and for weeks they would handle the truth. They would handle the real thing. And they would look at it and they would see it and they would rub it, Angie, and they would know every little thing about the truth. And then when somebody would try to bring something fake, they knew right away, not because they were massive studiers of deception, but because they were masters of the truth. Jesus Christ is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And there's a lot going on right now, and if you're not careful, you'll find yourself dipping over here and reading this and dipping over here and dipping over here, and you'll be an expert on the culture, but you'll realize you ain't been reading your Bible. That your time on Facebook, your time on YouTube, your time on Instagram has actually consumed you to the point where now you can't tell fake from real. When this song says you're a great God, he's saying focus on me, I am not tripping, God is not shaking, God is not on Xanax, no offense if you take Xanax, God is not in heaven going, oh my gosh, all of these school shootings, oh my God, this is going on. God is waiting for his people to rise up and know that he is the truth. Now lift your hands. One more time, man. One more time. Focus on the truth. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, man. Say that name.
tell him, tell him. You are strong and mighty. There's no one else like you. You are great. You are great and powerful. No one can do the things you do. the beginning and the end. lift your hand. God, we love you so much and you are a great God. Father, we're not telling you that because you don't know it. We're telling you that because we don't know it. We're convincing ourselves, God, we're confessing to ourselves because you already know you're a great God. You already know you're the only God. So I thank you, Father. There are a lot of chains that need to be broken today in our country, in our society, in our families, even in our church, God. But I thank you that we'll focus on the name that breaks the chain and not try to focus on the chain. So, Father, we honor you and we love you. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, to hover over us today. Hover over your word and give a supernatural impartation to the scripture today so we can walk out of this place and live it all week long so that we please you. We love you, Father, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, come on, give God a shout today. Come on, come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice today. Amen. Praise God. Good praise and worship, huh? That gets you clean. You guys know what praise and worship is? It's like playing outside all week in the dirt, and praise and worship is the shower. Come on, somebody. Praise and worship is the shower. Two people clap. That sucks. And you get clean when you're in the presence of God. You get, you get clean, amen? All right. So let's jump right into it. First of all, good morning, everybody. Amen. God is good. How many of y'all know he is good? All right. Come on, put your hand over your heart. You don't have to stand if you don't want to, but if you want to, that's great. This is our Abundant Living Creed. We want to welcome our visitors today. If you're, you're a visitor here for the first time, would you lift your hand so we can see you? Get our eyeballs. Hello, hello. Where, where else you at? I saw another hand. Way in the back. What's up? Come on. Y'all are so sleepy today. Come on. You didn't have no turkey this weekend. Come on, lift your voice, Abundant Living. Let them feel welcome. Come on. <clears throat> that stinks. You visit the church and two people clap. I apologize, visitors. They act like they're pastor. Okay, here we go. All right. This is our Abundant Living Creed on the count of three. One, two, three. We are Abundant Living, and we receive the life of Jesus. Our families, our friends, our communities will know about his life. We will experience abundant prayer. We will provide abundant care. We will pursue abundant health. We will increase through abundant wealth. We will love in our abundant families, and we will commit to abundant service. We are abundant nation, and we will know him and make him known. Come on, give God a shout. Amen, amen. All right, you can be seated. So let me apologize again like I did last week. So I sat, I, I took the family to go see the Festival of Lights uh, in Riverside at the Mission Inn, and please don't go. Mama, it was the festival of a hallway. We said, where are the fireworks? COVID. I said, the fireworks got COVID? It was like a, it was like a broke down Santa Claus hanging off the building a couple of toy soldiers, the two nutcrackers, Priscilla, one of them had a nutcrack. I'm telling you, I mean, they, all my grandbabies were like, whoa, Papa. And, and we went like this, and we turned left, and we was out in the courtyard. The babies turned and said, Papa. I said, hey, man, this ain't on me. So I was there at the mission, and I was trying to figure out my message because I'm trying to be Christmassy. I said, thank you, Jesus, here we go. So I was laying in the bed before I got up, and I said, I was coming up with all these titles for Christmas, and I had all these fancy titles, Tony. And the Lord said, mm-mm. And I said, okay, here's another one. Rudolph, he's mm-mm. And I said, okay, let me preach on Frosty. He's mm-mm. I said, okay, the Grinch, mm-mm. And I said, Lord, it's Christmas. And I'm going to tell you what he told me. He said, uh-huh, and it's the last hour. I said, Lord, again? He said, yep. So today's message, 
overcoming deception. Two weeks before Christmas, I said, Lord, you're going to get me kicked off the Internet. He said, good. I said, okay. So uh, I'm going to try next week, come up with a Christmas. Happy birthday, Miss Shirley. You had a big old party last night. You still here? When a Christian goes in parties and comes to church on Sunday, you know something is going on, and the party didn't have no alcohol. Okay. She's all bright. She's like, <laughs> don't look at me like that. Y'all know how y'all was after some birthday parties. We'll call it that. Everybody say overcoming deception. So here we go, Kendra. I'm, I'm just, I don't know what to do. Last week I felt bad, and this week I think I feel worse. But I don't know what to say, and um, I'm going to tell you that today's message it's just, it's just going to be deep. It's going to be confronting. But we have got to be aware of what's happening. You know, the devil stole the word woke, Lolita, and he's, so now he's got this whole brand called woke, right? But their woke is actually asleep. And the church is actually asleep when it should be woke. Watch this, Robert. Good to see you, bro. So the Bible says, awaken out of your sleep. So the devil reads the Bible, Josiah, and he said, oh, yeah. So the church is supposed to be awake. So what I will do is awaken the culture and make the church feel like they sleep. And that's what's happening, and that's what we're witnessing right now. So I'm going to give you a heavy revelation today, Bobby, of where I think people in my profession, where we are not preparing people for the right time. Because, see, here's the thing, right? Can I be honest, Jennifer? If this was 10 years ago, I'd have a Christmas message today. Now, you, please, you got to listen, because what I'm about to say, uh, Ruth Ed, is about your family. Stacey, it'll help you in your guiding your family, your kids. you got some great kids. It's going to help you. So if this was 10 years ago, Karen, I would be up here preaching about Christmas. But the Lord is like, okay. You want to talk about Christmas, and there's time for that while people are leaving the earth, being hurled into eternity, and they are blind when they die. So I don't know if God is as into Christmas as we are. I'm being serious because I think it should be Christmas every day for a believer celebrating the birth of Christ and taking that message out. So everybody say the last hour. So you got to plug in now. Here we go. And it's, gonna, it's just going to get deep today. Everything is shifting. Everybody say everything is shifting. Can y'all feel it or is it just me? No, I'm being honest. Now, don't be all like super spiritual like, yes, I saw vision. No, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about in general, in general, Lonnie, it, you know what? We, we've been doing church and doing family, and doing marriage, and, and doing politics, like it's 6 o'clock. If 12 o'clock's the rapture, Lorraine, we're acting like it's 6 o'clock. So, Frank, the time has been winding down. The scripture says, when you see these things, know the time is winding down. And because now preachers want to be popular and not confrontive, they don't warn the people what time it is. And can I tell you, here's the problem. Most believers don't wear a watch. Matt, they come to church on Sunday and want the pastor to tell them what time it is. That's not my job. I don't tell you what time to go to work. I don't tell you what time to wake up. I don't tell you what time to feed. I don't tell you what time to feed your kids. I don't tell you that because you have your own watch and you have your own time. You have to tell time yourself right now. And you can't be waiting on somebody in church to tell you that. So you got to be in your word because your word is telling you what time it is. Now, it is not 6 o'clock. It is not 7 o'clock. It's not 8 o'clock. And then it got to be 9 o'clock, and the church dug didn't switch. So I don't know about everybody else. Thank you for watching on Facebook. But this church, we switching. Because when you look at human history, it's probably 11 o'clock. So I can't preach what I normally want to preach. I can't do what I would normally do because I'm not preparing you for what time it is. So everything is shifting. 
But the guardians of truth, who are the guardians of truth? Believers. Remember I said about the bank teller, Kendra? We're the guardians of truth. We're supposed to know, Keith. Good to see you. You feel better? Good. That's good. You look better. Your hair grew. Ain't that something? We're supposed to be the guardians of truth, Frank. We're supposed to know when somebody's handing us a counterfeit versus the real thing. Miss Rosemary, we're supposed to know in prayer and intercession and in discernment and in godly wisdom, not demonic wisdom, Janae, because there's two different types. The devil's speaking to people from his, from his airways, and God is speaking to people. And so both of them are speaking. It just determines what direction your antenna is in. I'm talking about your antenna today. Because depending on which direction your attendance is flowing, you're going to pick up the wrong signal. So the guardians of truth, watch this, Kendra, have not embraced what time it is. So we are acting, living, speaking, walking, asking, and we're talking like it's 6 o'clock. Oh, y'all. But you turn on the news, and it looks like 1159. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that, Miss Sylvia, how we feel, how we preach, how we're doing church, how we're doing God, Austin, don't match what we're seeing on TV? Because guess what? The devil's cranking it up. The enemy is cranking it up. The spirit of the Antichrist is getting ready for the Antichrist to come, Paul, and he's cranking it up. So violence, 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 death, school shooting. Have you noticed we're back there again? We're back there again, school shooting, after school shooting, after school shooting. And the pastor want to talk about reindeer. When the Bible says, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. It shall be like the days of Noah. Go back and read the Bible about the days of Noah. The days of Noah, they were filled with violence, Matt. Every single thought was filled with violence. And we're getting up here with these soft messages that I want to preach because I want to preach it. But it's 11 o'clock. So I'm going to give you a revelation today. You ready? Here it is. Watch. We have heard all the preachers speak on the last days. This is so heavy, can you watch? What if we're in the last hour? Rita, y'all, I don't know what to say today. And you can judge me too. Judge me. Judge me. Oh, no. We've been talking about the last days since the 70s. And we haven't switched because the church is not operating on no discernment because the church and the pastors are downloading messages off the Internet that are echoes instead of hearing the Holy Spirit who heard Jesus, who heard the Father, and telling us what to do, and we're doing something else because it, it, it is, it's better. We won't get kicked off Facebook. We have to, we have to be seeker friendly. We have to do all that. None of that's in the Bible. The Bible says that the Scripture will offend you. But better to be offended now, Mike, than fall into hell thinking you was going to heaven. So I promise you, I will offend you with no apology. We haven't switched, Kendra. We're acting, doing church. People come to church. Well, I don't want to come to that church because that church doesn't have any programs. I want to have a program for singles. I want to have a program for married. I want to have a program for seniors. I want to have a program for children. I want to have a program for preteen. I want to have a, pro for a program for teen. I want to have a program for junior high. I want to have a program for high school. I want to have an outreach program. I want to have a program for homeless. Can I keep going? This? Can I, I want to have a program for people that are on drugs. I want to have a program for people who struggle with the same sex attraction. I want, and I don't come to that church because they don't have a hundred programs. Check this out. Whatever city you live in, go get that recreational book and go pay and find a program. Because the, birth, the church in the book of Acts, I don't see them with no singles ministry. I see them preaching the gospel and feeding the poor. I see them with all things in common. I see them making sure that they're all right. But I see their number one priority is preaching the scriptures and not tickling people so everybody feel good. Now, are we going to have programs? Yes. But if you don't want to come here because we don't have what you want, then go somewhere. Because what you are going to get is the unadulterated gospel on Sunday morning, and I'm going to encourage you to get in your word seven days a week, and that's what you need because it's the last hour. It is not the last days. <laughs> oh, it's Christmas. <laughs> I'm sorry.
you and I would live differently and make different choices if we thought we had only days versus knowing we had only hours. Kiana, so, so watch. So look. Monday morning comes. Jesus walks in and says to you, I'm coming back Friday at 12 noon. You have five days. Come on, yell out what you would do. What would y'all do? Huh? Be with my family. I'm going to Hawaii. What you going to do? Be with your family. What else? Come on, talk to me, y'all. Don't act like this is a Catholic church. You got five days? Okay, somebody, somebody spiritual said ask for forgiveness. Like call everybody and say, what's up, bro? I ain't talked to you in a minute. I'm sorry. We're going to put away this $5, Jason. We, and ain't, I ain't tripping no more. It's like 1980. What would you do? Come on, y'all talk to me. You got five days. Huh? So witness, what else? Paul, what'd you say? I heard you. I heard you. I heard your deep voice. Go to the bank and get all my money out. Okay, watch, watch, watch. Watch, Brooke, watch this. So, it's 12 o'clock on Monday. Jesus comes and says, I'm going down to the CVS. I'll be back at 1. I'll be back in 60 minutes. What do you do now? Repent, ask for, okay, now watch this, watch. When you had a week, you were doing stuff. With an hour, you worried about you. This is why the world is on fire, because they think they have forever. Do y'all understand that climate change is acting like we're going to be here hundreds more years? And there's a whole economic system and politicism of, of climate change, and the climate change four times a year, winter, spring, summer, fall. Climate's going to change, Right? But it's acting like we're going to be here 100 years. It's not acting like there's a tribulation. It doesn't, are y'all hearing me? It doesn't act like, and the news don't act like CNN or Fox. They don't act like there's going to be a one world government and a one world ruler. They don't act like the big A antichrist is coming, Jennifer. Do you understand that all the news, which is now propaganda, that is flowing to you doesn't take into account eschatology? Eschatology is a fancy word for saying end-time study of the word. Do you understand that everything that is feeding you from the world, that's what I'm going to talk about today, everything that is feeding you is giving you information that doesn't have the information. They act like, talk like, legislate both parties, like God is not here. Because they think we're in the last days. Because the people that are supposed to warn them that we're in the last hour aren't doing their job. Do you know? Do you know if I had an hour, I would immediately grab all my family. I say, you come here right now, you got 10 minutes. And I sit them in the living room, and I'd be preaching the gospel or slapping them. I'd be giving them the right hand of fellowship. You better church God. I would grab the people that I love. Come on, somebody. And Frank, I would ask God, the Holy Spirit, help me say the thing they have not been hearing. Because in 60 minutes, this thing shuts down, and we enter into the tribulation period, and it's going to be hell on earth. If I had an hour, I would function differently than if I had five days. Y'all have to hear me. This is why this generation is, see, I don't blame the kids in the street. I don't blame the kids doing the smash and grab. See, there you go, Pastor Mark. You're a socialist. Okay. Keep thinking that. I don't blame them for their behavior when our generation never passed down the legacy of Christ. I don't blame them. I think they're mad, they're pissed off, and, and they're handling it incorrectly. I don't support it. 
listen to me. I don't support tearing up your old neighborhood. I don't support it. I don't care what you or anybody else say. You didn't build that business, but you think you can throw a chair through it and go smash and grab something, and you didn't put no money into it, talking about insurance. People are not going to be covering this stuff anymore. But I don't blame them. You say, Pastor Mark, what do you mean you don't blame them? They're the ones doing it, Uh uh-huh. And we are the ones that live prayerless in front of them. Now, here I'm going to give you something today, and it's going to get rough in here. Because all of us sitting in here, most of us, can I be honest about something right now? Starting, can I? Huh? Okay. Most of our kids are on TikTok, not in church. Now, just look straight ahead and say, not my kids. Most of our kids are on Facebook and Instagram, not in church. Most of our kids are not living the way we raised them. And today, I'm going to show you in the Bible what is wrong with this generation. And Miss Peggy, the reason our kids have not gotten stronger in Christ is because we have gotten weaker in him. But I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to show you the mechanics of what's wrong in these streets that we see and why they lit. Because we have not been. So it's easy for all these organizations, Antifa, BLM, to come and snatch the mind from a generation when there was nothing in their mind about Christ in the first place. You ready? So here it is, today's truth. There are literally thousands of examples, in se- and in January, I'm going to hit it, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to hit the accelerator of the day, and I ain't looking back. There are literally thousands of examples of how things have shifted in these last hours of human history. So repeat after me, because this is important. Last hour of human history. Say it again, because you got to understand this. Last hour of human history. Of human history, Barbara. So... When I say, if you're young in here, you don't understand. When I say, Glennis, the last days, it sounds longer. But when I say the last hour, and I'm going to show you in the scripture. When I say the last hour, we're talking about the last time period, Margie, of the 6,000 years of human history. Then there will be a 1,000 years where Jesus is here ruling called the millennial kingdom. And the devil who deceived them will be in the bottomless pit, not the lake of fire yet. He will be thrown, Twyla, into the bottomless pit, and we will have Jesus physically ruling from Jerusalem. So God will physically be on earth during those thousand years. Then the Bible says all the babies, all the people that were raised up and born in the thousand years still got to make a choice, Sebastian, just like me and you got to make. So then the devil is going to be released from the bottomless pit. And once he's released from the bottomless pit, he will go out to deceive and to tempt the nations. Then, because Jesus is physically here, Tiffany, all the nations are going to come and try to attack him. And this time, God, the Father says, I got this one. Y'all been messing with my son long enough. So God, the Father, will cause a sword to come out of the mouth of Jesus. And they will all be wiped out. And the Bible says that the blood will be, see, we ain't preaching like this no more. The Bible will say that the blood will be to the horse's bridle, that there's so much bloodshed. And then after the smoke clears, young people, there's going to be one figure, say one, one figure kneeling down like this. And then we're going to look at him, the Bible says, and this is a direct quote, is this the man that took down nations? Is this the man that took down kingdoms? And the man symbolically we're going to be talking about is Lucifer, who is now the dragon, who is now the devil. And the Bible says he is going to bow down and Leon, and he's going to say, Jesus Christ, you are Lord. And then Michael is going to come with a great chain. And Revelation 20, verse 10 is going to come and kick in, Miss Ann. And the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And there they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. The false prophet will already be in there. The beast will already be in there. 
Then they're going to scoop them up, Glennis, and now the devil will no longer torment humanity. When I say last hour, I'm talking about the time before those seven years. Janessa, you do it better than anybody I've seen. You're young, and she reps God on Facebook. See, she's not using Facebook to get a bunch of likes and to post and to become Facebook, TikTok, Instagram famous. She's on Facebook, and she is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to her generation. Stand up, girl. To her generation. She's a monster. I mean, a monster. But she, she really believed this thing. I had to go convince her to get a smartphone because I got to talk to her about some stuff. And young adult ministry, she said, mm-mm. What young adult don't have a smartphone? She's not attached to the world. So are y'all ready? Here we go. So watch. And I'm going to give you a real life example. Ready, Kendra? This is our failure. This is our failure. And we got a lot to think about today. We preach love God. We preach Love fellow believers. We haven't preached, Your Honor. Don't love the world. What'd you say, preacher? What did you say? We preach love God. We preach love people. We have not preached, Mr. Wendell, so that it's easy. Don't love the world, so our children are on TikTok more than church because we were on TV more than in our word. While they grew up. See, you, you judge this generation. You judge them about their social media. What about your social soap operas? See, young people don't even know what I'm talking about when I say soap operas. Some of you in here, and if you're over 50, don't look at me like that. Guiding light in search of tomorrow, the restless and the young and the young and the restless. General Hospital. Y'all better talk to me about Luke. See, y'all don't want this. The young people don't even know what I'm talking about. Don't worry about Sebastian. This is just a long time ago. But, but, but young, but, but, but especially ladies, I'm going to talk to you. You ran home so you can watch the soap operas. And now you have the nerve to talk about TikTok. You have the nerve to talk. And, and all those soap operas had illicit sex in them. All the soap operas, I'm preaching under the anointing today. All the soap operas had, had adultery in them. All the soap operas had immorality in them. And you were fiending like this. You were fiending. Had to get off work so you could watch it. And soap opera after soap opera after soap opera after soap opera. And then the men came home and bumped their wife out to sea because you got to watch four football games. You got to watch four basketball games. You got And see, here's, here's where people on Facebook are going to flip out on me. Here's what I'm going to tell you. All of that is worldly. I didn't say all of it was really bad. Ain't nothing wrong with football, but something's wrong with football, Jason, when you know more about the statistics of your favorite team than Samuel's grades. See, that's when it becomes sin. Oh, I'm preaching today. That's when it becomes sin. When you're so into it, when you're so into it because your flesh of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the, the eyes and the pride of life, you're so into what's being pumped into you through the world system that you can't understand that it's all a deception, building up a deception. So now we have a generation that don't want to watch TV. They want to be on it. Uh, see how you look? They want to do it. Where did they learn it? Where did your kids and my kids learn to be worldly? Let me be honest. Let me start with me, from me and you. Now, I should just stop there and go home. No, that's enough to sit on because you never connected TV and soap operas and sports to TikTok, did you? Well, you did today. In January, I'm Mike. I'm going to hit this, and people, I don't know what's going to happen to the church. I don't know. Mama, you going to come? I know about two people that's going to come. Kendra got to come. Mama, maybe. Here it is. Genesis 127. 
Now watch. Don't go down the path you think I'm going down because you ain't going down the path I'm going down. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, listen, in the image and likeness. The word likeness in the Hebrew means to function. So, Frank, man looks like God and man functions like God. Do y'all understand? Okay. In the image and likeness of God, <clears throat> he created him. So, listen, he created him. Who's him? No, no, who's him? Adam first. So, here's what he's saying. Watch. Watch, angel. God created him. The first him was Adam. Then God split it off. And here's a nasty word. You ready? Made it a binary choice. What's the new word? Non-binary when it comes to gender. And your kids are being taught that in school. Male and female. He, who's he? God created them. Them are the two genders. Them are the two genders, the two groups of attributes that sit inside God. Now people say, I'm non-binary. I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about the ideology. No, here's how you should say it. You're non-scriptural. I know I'm going to get in trouble. God told me, male and female, he created them. Now, some of you, because you're like super-duper Christians and super-judgmental, You say, that's what I'm talking about, and you want to get into LGBTQ, FYG, ABC. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the foundational creation of male and female that flows out of the Scripture. But the message is overcoming deception. How'd you do, Brooklyn? Okay. Watch this. Take your time. We had trouble with the link. So until you can hear it, there you go. Good job. All year we watched schools try to get in between the uh, parents and their children. It became a political flashpoint in places like Loudoun County, Virginia, where parents stood up and made it clear that they wouldn't co-parent with the government. But it's not just happening there. A couple in Florida is suing their daughter's school district for secretly helping her change her gender without their permission or consent. January and Jeffrey John Little's 13-year-old daughter expressed confusion about her gender, and she told her parents that. The parents told the school that they could refer to her, their daughter, as Jay, but they couldn't do anything else. But the school overstepped its bounds and privately met with Jay to discuss changes in accommodations for her, like things about what bathroom she would use, without telling uh, her parents. So joining me now is attorney uh, Vernadette Broyles, along with Jeffrey and January John Little, the parents that are suing their daughter's school board. Uh, all of you, thank you for joining me. January, I want to go to you first. I mean, I got to tell you what, uh, I'm a parent of nine, and I would be so outraged that you're trying to work with the school and the school undermined you and your advice on what you wanted them to do. What were you feeling when you found out the school was not following your wishes? Well, I was outraged. Um, I was confused. I had a very good relationship with the school. I volunteered there hundreds of hours. In fact, I was volunteer of the year at this school. They knew me. I'd had multiple meetings with um, my daughter's guidance counselor regarding her 504 plan. So I just, I didn't understand how with this particular issue, they could somehow cut me out without my permission, my authority. I I didn't understand how this could happen. Well, no, it's, I mean, you, you trusted the school board. You wanted to partner with them to make sure you were all on the same page, and they violated that trust. And so, Bernadette, t- t- to you, what legal recourse do you have here? Well, what we've done is that we have filed a federal lawsuit in the Northern District of, of Florida because what the school district did is that essentially it 
it treated parents as if they are a danger, they're presumed to be a danger to their children. And when it comes to a mental health decision that's significant, is when a child begins to feel and express confusion about their biological sex, that is when they need their parents the most. And so what the school district did is that it drove a wedge between this child and her parents, and it treated the child as if she's a mere creature of the state. And over almost 100 years ago, the Supreme Court of the United States decided that children are not the mere creatures of the state in two cases, Myers versus Nebraska and Pierce versus Party of Sisters. So we, are, we stand on very strong constitutional ground as well as Florida statutes and law to uh, file this lawsuit and make it clear that what the school district did was to overstep their bounds, violate the fundamental parental rights of these parents here, and they need to be held accountable. No, they are. Okay, let's pause it. Okay, you go ahead and come out of that group. So I emailed you two pictures. Can, can you pull those? Thank you. So, do you guys understand what's happening? Huh? Okay, hold on. We got a lot of things. So, this is a Smithsonian Institute. Um, I wish you can't hear it, but this is a Smithsonian Institute exhibit. And go back to the first picture, uh, Brooke. It's called genderlessvoice.com. I'm created for a future where we are no longer defined by gender. Go to the next one. Think of me like Siri or Alexa, but neither male or female. So when we come back in January, we'll have the video where you, because you have to hear it. They took males and females and blended their voice, and it's called Q. And now... When kids go to the Smithsonian Institute, they see this exhibit, and this exhibit is about genderless voices. But what I want you to understand, and we're going to move on, is that this is about, go back to the first picture, Brooke. I'm created for what? Where what? Okay, listen to me carefully. That is an example of the spirit of the Antichrist. It is not an example of the Antichrist. That is a world ruler. I'll be talking about that later. The Bible says little Antichrist, Now I'm going to show you why it's the last hour. You have to mean you have to switch. Little Antichrist must come, Mike, and they prepare the way for the big A Antichrist. You've heard me say that before. What's wrong is we're still functioning like it's the last days when we moved from days, Jason, into hours. But nothing has changed in the church. Same structure, same thinking, same preaching, same programs. We, we have not changed in the church. We have not switched gears in the church. So this generation walks in no power because they have seen no power. All right, let me move on. First John 2, 15 through 20. So do you understand? Do you understand? The scripture said in Genesis 1, 27, which is the spirit of Christ, Miss Fran, I created them, God said, male and female. But the Smithsonian has kids coming through on a tour, and they have a genderless voice exhibit called Q, so that people, when kids come, they're already being programmed, Stacy, to understand that it's no longer a binary choice. It is a non-binary choice. And you are how you express yourself. Now, don't go overboard today because I don't want you getting all caught up and being judgmental. I'm going to teach on this later. I am not talking about the individual who was going through this change or this struggle. Because sometimes it's a struggle and sometimes it's a change for people personally. I'm just letting you know there are spirits in the earth trying to flag down the world leader called the Antichrist. And they're trying to make it because do you know that the Bible says about the, oh, Lord, Holy Spirit, you got to be kidding me. There's a scripture that says that the big A Antichrist will not be interested in males or females. 
Ah, that was straight from heaven right there. So when the world leader comes, he won't have a boyfriend and he won't have a girlfriend because he is not interested in sexual relations. He is interested in world domination because that's what Lucifer, who is now Satan, who is now the dragon, is interested in. And he needs a body, Frank, that will be a good host. So that body has to think. That body has to walk. That body has to talk just like the devil so the devil ah, oh my god so the devil is sending out and releasing spirits of the antichrist that are getting ready for that world leader and we are missing it because we are in love with the system that is delivering the spirits of the antichrist as believers so we don't stop we don't hold back we don't restrain. We don't push back because we love the very thing that is coming through. And it's called the world system. 1 John 2, 15, 20. Do not love the world. It's not talking about the physical or material world. Listen carefully. It's not talking about, Janae, the physical world and material world. You can still go shopping, girl, and be like, hey. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the ideologies, the ideas, and the thinking that opposes Christ. Does this make sense, Peggy? So when it says don't love the world, it's not saying don't love the planet, don't love the people, don't love the materials. It is saying don't love the system that opposes God, anti-Christ. Don't love messages that oppose God. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Just, what? If you love the world, you don't love God. Do y'all know how tough that is when you was watching uh, General Hospital? Young and the restless. Because, see, the soap operas took your desire away through the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh. Yes, you were waiting, goodness. and you had a desire to see what Think was going to happen like Luke and Laura. Did I watch that stuff? Okay, in the name of Jesus. You had a desire. That's on you, mama. That's on you. I was in middle school. <laughs> but your desire is being pulled to propaganda, Tony, that in the end opposes God. That exhibit opposes God, Mary. That exhibit opposes the created order of God. It says we're waiting for a world, Natasha, that's going to come and it's going to be genderless. That's what their goal is. That is a spirit of the Antichrist. And it's not spooky. It's not, oh, this horn thing. It's not this thing, Alvin, with tails. That is a spirit driving a policy, driving driving a person, driving a culture, driving an organization, Laura. That is a spirit that is trying to oppose the creative order of God. Huh, I'm trying. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the desire of what we're attracted to, the lust of the eyes, so all the system pumps into your eyes images like we showed last week that are not, that Kim Kardashian is not your wife and your wife is not Kim Kardashian. But if you put in Kim into Google, she paid to come up first. And this is not against Kim Kardashian. I'm showing you that a system is trying to deliver an image of a woman you're supposed to desire when God built you to desire the woman he gave you. That's all. I don't want somebody calling me, oh, you're talking about Kim Kardashian. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life. The pride of life is your arrogance based on what you have accumulated through the system. The pride, the pride of life is defined, Barbara, by the arrogance we have when we have three cars instead of one, a big house instead of a small one, when we have a house over an apartment. God says, thank me because I bless you, but don't chase the blessing, chase me. 
The pride, oh, I'm preaching today by the Holy Ghost. The pride of life, the pride of life is trying to acquire stuff outside of what God has given you. And the pride of life, reader, is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world is passing away. This is why it doesn't make sense. Because your temporary desires, my temporary desires, we should be chasing them. We should be chasing eternal desires. I'm going to wrap it up in a minute. And the world is passing away and the lust of it. So the things I just described are passing away. The things I, I just described are temporary. Yeah, you can leave your wife of 30 years and go get somebody half your age, but you don't know that somebody half your age is creepy with somebody her age. I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I'm going to say it because pills only going to take you so far. And the world... No, men be running around grabbing women half their age, leaving their wife to help them build their family, help them build their career, help them build their life. And now that you made it, you want to leave her behind? How dare you? That's not biblical because a biblical man protects. A biblical man covers. A biblical man takes care. A biblical man don't run. A biblical man fights for his family. He don't fight his family. A biblical man represents God to his family. And the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, watch this. Little children. And let's not talk about little kids. We're talking about people that only have a basic awareness of God. It is the last hour. Here it is. It is the what? It's not the last days. The preachers, last days. Last days, Mike. No. No. This is why I was in a hotel struggling. You saw me struggling trying to put this together because my mind wants to talk about last days. And God's telling me, Mark, you can't preach Christmas right now. It is the last hour. It is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist, look, big A, he is coming. But then, this is 2,000 oh years ago, Miss Sylvia. And we're 2,000 years beyond this. Look what it says, Dora. Watch, watch. That the Antichrist is coming. Even now, right now when John is writing, even now many Antichrists have come. They had already, that spirit had already come. Jesus, do you understand that Jesus just really left? And the spirit of the Antichrist, Mike, is already in the earth, and Jesus just left? Jennifer, what is it like now? And he's been gone 2,000 years. What time is it, y'all? Maybe I need to do a message called Last Minutes. Maybe we'll live right. Watch, Kendra. Even now, many antichrists have come. Oh, I'm out of time. But which we know. Do y'all understand? The last day's message is incorrect. Paul is not right. It's a preacher preaching an echo from an echo from a preacher preaching an echo who downloaded it. It's not the last days. Josiah, we're in the last hours, the last hours of human history, where history of humans before God comes to live on earth is wrapped up. And we act like, and the news act like, and the politicians act like, and no matter who's president, they act like, we're going to be here another 50, 100, 200 years. We have to be good stewards over the planet, but the planet cannot be saved because First Peter says it's going to be burnt up. It was flooded the first time because of sin. This time it's going to be burnt up. So that's some serious climate change. We're not using the Bible to explain it. Here's my last thing. And now many of the Christ have come because we know that we know that it is the last hour because they're here, because of that of that those articles, Kendra, because of that genderless thing. And there's a thousand gender, thousand examples. Because of it, it is the last hour. It's not Mark preaching. Oh, I discern, Stacy, that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me that it is the last hour. No, no, no. The Scripture says, if you see this, it is this time. You guys, and we have to live better. 
But you have an anointing, and I ain't going to fool since I did this on Wednesday. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Now, let me stop here. Here's the breakdown of the church. You're chasing anointed people, and nobody is anointed. Now, I said this on Wednesday, and if you're a deep Christian, you're, you're going to about throw up in your mouth. Nobody is anointed. It's Christian talk that is non-biblical. Oh, he's anointed. Oh, Pastor Mark is anointed. Oh, Pastor T.D. Jakes is anointed. Oh, Pastor Stephen Furtek is anointed. Stop talking foolishness. The Bible says, Jesus says, I am the one that is anointed, and on the cross he died and said, it is finished. So there are no more anointed people. Now, I know some of y'all are struggling right now, but I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. Right, because you want to follow anointed people so you don't have to do nothing. That's all. It's the truth. You want, you want your pastor to be anointed? Paige, they want the pastor to be anointed so they don't have to pray for themselves, so they don't have to lay hands on the sick. I can just bring them to church and my anointed pastor would do it. No, your pastor's not anointed. But you have an anointing. What are you talking about, Pastor Mark? It says it right there. No, it don't. From the Holy One. And watch, want me proving that? Watch. Here's how come I know no humans other than Jesus when he came are anointed. And you know all things. Okay? So if you call your pastor anointed, then he better know all things. See? 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 Rosemary, we just in church, Church of God in Christ, Baptist, and we just repeat Christian cliches, and there is no power. Because it's not biblical. You're not anointed. The Holy Spirit is the anointing. Watch, Miss Peggy. He comes inside of me, and he teaches me, John 16, 13, all things. What happens is God comes inside, Miss Peggy, uses a man. His church gets big. His ministry gets big. His TV gets big, his TV audience. Then he wakes up one day and believes what people are telling him. And he believes he is anointed. Then we read about him in a hotel with a prostitute. When was you anointed? What happened, bro? No. See, see, the source, Jennifer, is from the Holy Spirit who chose to use him in that moment, but the Holy Spirit wants to use all of us in the moments that come up where we need to deliver the gospel. He doesn't like Christian American Idol. So now we say we're anointed. No, the Holy Spirit is the anointing. And when he teaches us, we know all things only because he knows all things, only because Jesus came in the flesh and he knows all things, and only because the Father knows all things. The human is the pipe. He's not the water. Here it is, and I'm done because I'm out of time. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. The whole message today, read the application for yourself. I can't get into it now. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. Concerning those who try to deceive you. Watch, Astrid. When? In the last hour. I tried to preach a Christmas message. I tried to be good today. But I felt impressed in that mission in. And maybe because ministry was on there. I don't know. I had a strong impression that I can't preach Christmas this Sunday. I have to warn you that it's the last hour and things must change because the church is being deceived to the point where we're no longer effective, Priscilla. We're irrelevant, and it's because we love the world like the worldly people love it. So we love God. We love Christians, Angie. But we also love the world. And can I tell you this, and I'm done, and you're going to be mad. When you love the world, you cancel the first two. So we're living in a time, Alvin, where people walk around with a Jesus shirt, but no power, no demonstration, and no righteousness. So the world doesn't care about your T-shirt. It cares about your life. Let's give them a hand clap. That's it.
I don't know, son. I don't know. And see, e- even, even I'm uncomfortable because I feel like I should be doing something else. But I'm going to follow Christ. Lift your hands. Brooke, did we make it on there? They kick us off? That's just a miracle right there. Lift your hands. If you felt God today, just stand to your feet. If you want more of God, I'm not even going to do the traditional altar call. If you, I felt like the whole message was an altar call. If you need Jesus, stand to your feet. Just stand, stand to your feet. Facebook, if you're at home, stand to your feet. Just stand, stand to your feet. Turn it up. Good choice. Turn it up. Such a good choice. Come, Jesus. Something's on me. I I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Withholding nothing. Come on. You can't hold nothing back from Jesus today. Come on, just worship. Turn it up for me, you guys. That's good. Just worship for a minute. Just for a minute, come, Lord Jesus, and save us. Come, Lord, come on up, baby. Come, Lord Jesus, and purge us, yes. Come on up. Come, Lord Jesus, purge us. Purge us from all sin and unrighteousness. They'll bring it to you. Just come on. Come on, come on, come on. They'll bring it to you. Come on, worship, worship. Come on, worship him. Purge us, God. Forgive us for being in love with the world. Forgive us for having fleshly desires. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. We need to be clean, God, withholding nothing. If you've been withholding, tell God you're sorry today. Tell God you're sorry today. We surrender to you, Jesus. We surrender our heart. We surrender our children, God. We surrender our heart today. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him. Couple more minutes and we're done. Come on, come on, come on. Holding nothing. Cleanse us, God, from all unrighteousness. Father, cleanse us, God. Cleanse us. Come on, pray to God right now. Say, God, clean me. Say, God, I repent. I repent for what I watch. I repent for what I'm listening to. I repent for little time in the Word. I've got time every day to be in your word. Cleanse me, God. Old things are passed away. All things become new. If you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, that he came in the flesh, and now he'll live inside of you. Come on, lift your hands today. My Savior. Come on, come on, come on forever. Give you all of me. Come on, come on, worship. Give you all of me. Come on, call him. King Jesus, we repent, God. My Savior forever. You all of me, God. Hallelujah. Come, Lord Jesus. You're our King, God. Divorce us from the world, God. Divorce us from the world, God. We give you all of us, God. Hallelujah. We bind every spirit in the name of Jesus that's coming against the name of Jesus Christ. I bind every antichrist spirit in politics. I bind every antichrist spirit in Hollywood. I bind every antichrist spirit in the church. I bind every antichrist spirit in America, God. We call those spirits down in the name of Jesus. You are King Jesus. And we surrender our heart to you. We surrender to you, Jesus. We bind every demon and every devil in our families, God, attacking our children, attacking this generation, attacking those people in the street. We bind the spirit of violence that's trying to bring death in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. If one can put a 1,000, two can put 10,000. We plead the blood of Jesus today, and we surrender our hearts and our minds to you, God. I thank you that today we invite you into our heart after we repent, God, for being sinners, God. We repent for being sinners. We repent for saying that we love you and still loving the world equally. We cannot love you and we cannot love this world system, God. We repent. That means to reverse and turn away, God. We turn away. We turn away today. 
Old things are passed away, and all things have become new. Repeat after me today. Dear Jesus, I'm so, so sorry. I love you, but I love the world too. The world has had my attention sometimes more than you. Today, I make a decision. I make a commitment to love you with all my heart, all my mind, and all my strength. Come inside me. Lord Jesus, live through me. Today, I am officially born again. And you have all my attention. Now give him a shout today. Come on, give him a shout. Come on, lift your voice today. God is great. And his mercy endures forever. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, lift your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. If you said that prayer, you're born again. Now chase God like you chase sports, like you chase Hollywood, like you chase entertainment. Chase God more. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Amen. You may be seated. Something's happening. Something's happening. Facebook, we love you. No matter where you're watching us, no matter who shared this to you, take this message and put it in your heart and live for Jesus. God bless you. You can dismiss him. Thank you. Hello. We want to thank you for being a part of our service today here at Abundant Living Family Church, High Desert. Now is the time where you get to partake in this service through your giving and through your generosity. You know, the Bible says in the book of Acts that they had all things in common. And that is really true when it comes to our giving. When we give to the kingdom of God, we know that people around the world and in our local community are going to be blessed by your generosity. We have ministries in Uganda that are feeding the poor. We have ministries in India that provide water for people that don't have the water on a regular basis. And then here in our very own high desert community, we have people that are homeless, that just have different struggles. And our church is able to reach out to them and being able to take care of them and help them when they have trouble and are having struggles in their life. All of that happens because of you and because of your generosity. So we so appreciate today you being allowed at this time to give into the kingdom of God and be a blessing to those that might not have it. So we thank you so much and God bless you.